What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having a stellar day. Today, we're gonna try a new way to do the weave. Our determinant tomatoes here, well, we've got about seven or eight different varieties planted along the 60 foot row, are getting pretty big, so they need to be trellised. And if you're not familiar with the Florida weave, which you will be by the end of this video, but it's basically a technique where we put stakes between these plants here, usually two plants, between each stake and we weave twine in and around those plants around those stakes to support these guys it works really great for determinate tomatoes like we see here also works really great for peppers now the way i do the florida weave and the commercial tomato guys around here do it the same way is they have a box of twine sitting on their belt here you can find these big boxes of twine anywhere online i think i got this one off amazon and then you have a wand here so you use one hand to kind of control the tension on the string to keep it tight and use the wand to navigate the string around tomato plants and to tie around each post or stake as you go along the row. And for the last few years, I've been using this piece of PVC pipe here as my wand, but I've got a better idea. A few months ago, a guy sent me an email with a video to a commercial farmer who was doing the Florida weave, and he made this neat little wooden wand that looked like it made it a lot easier. So we're gonna give it a try. So instead of using something hollow, like this piece of pipe here as the wand, he used a wooden stick. Now you might be asking yourself, how are you gonna run string through that solid wooden stick there? Well, he did it pretty nifty. So what he did was he drilled a hole near the top of the stick here, ran the string through there so he could control the tension with his thumb, and then he put a little metal eye on the end here so he could use, you know, as a guide to move the string around the plants and around the post. Looked like it worked really, really good. So we're about to try to build one here. Now, I could have went to the store and just bought a wooden dowel and kind of worked with that a little bit, but I thought this was gonna work better. So I had a pair of these old loppers sitting around. They're kind of rusty and dull and I've got plenty of loppers. They're in a lot better shape than this. So I sacrificed this pair and I cut one of the handles off of it because this looked to be about the right size here. So this is probably about 18, 18 inches long or so. And I like this better than a wooden dowel because it already had a little bit of contour here where you can kind of grip the post or the wand a little better. So we cut the handle off right here with a handsaw, pretty easy to cut. But the problem with these handles is they got this varnish on them and I hate these varnish handles. They just, they're rough on your hands and they crack over time, not a big fan at all. So the first thing I had to do was sand that varnish off and it took some pretty heavy grit sandpaper to get it off of there, but I've got it sanded down to the bare wood. The other thing was, this end right here was kind of sharp where I cut it. And so what I wanted to do, that's the handle end, was kind of make this curved right here. So I took my little Dremel tool here and I kind of rounded off those edges there so my string wouldn't get caught or kind of fray when it ran across that sharp edge. And so we're gonna put our eye hook in this end here and then our string won't catch on that, be a nice smooth surface for it to be guided along. So the first thing I wanna do is install that eye in the end of this handle here. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in our vise, get it tightened down. So hopefully we can drill a straight hole there and we can sand off any grooves that this vise creates here in a minute. And because I've never done this before, I don't really know what size eye hook would be the best, but this looked like a good size for me. So we went with this guy right here and we're gonna drill a hole and put it right in the end there. I've got my impact driver here and got a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the threads on this eye hook. Cause we wanna get this thing in there nice and snug and we might even put some adhesive on it to make it stick good. So we're gonna try to drill a straight hole in the end of this stick here. And it looks like we're gonna need a slightly larger bit. And just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere, I'm gonna use some of this adhesive right here. I'm gonna put around this eye hook. Make sure 
it's not going anywhere and we'll just start to put this baby in here work smarter not harder and then what they say we use this wrench here to kind of help us out a little bit i think that should be pretty good right there shouldn't go anywhere now that we got our hook installed we need to drill us a hole about right here kind of where i remember him having it straight through the middle the hole needs to be big enough so we can run our string through there so the string is going to go up through that hole down here and through that loop and by having a hole there it's going to allow us to keep the tension on the string with the same hand that we're holding the wand with as opposed to keeping the tension on the string with our other hand so let's drill a hole straight through here and then see what we got I always like to start out with a small bit and then make it larger as we need to so we'll see if this hole is going to work run our string up through here and that will run down through that loop just like that and as we're doing this we can keep tension on the string with our thumb here and make sure we get it nice and tight around those plants and those posts I'm going to sand off this little bit of burr here so it doesn't catch and fray my string and then get the one on the bottom too. And then the last thing we need to do with our new nifty Florida weave wand is to coat and protect this wood here, but not with some sticky varnish. We're gonna use some linseed oil here. So we're just gonna put some of that on our rag. We're just gonna kind of liberally coat our new stick right here. We may end up putting several coats on it, but we're going to get a good coat on it right now. And this will give it some nice color. As you can see there, nice dark color. Also protect it, but keep it from uh, being all sticky and splintery like it is with that varnish. Get one more round here. There we go. Get some nice, nice color on it now. I'll let that soak in a minute. Make sure we get all this around this eye hook up here too. And there we go. Handy dandy, new, Lazy Dog certified Florida weave stick. Now when you're doing this, make sure you don't leave these rags laying around because they can spontaneously combust when they're coated with that linseed oil. So make sure you properly dispose of these guys. All right, all right, all right. Now it's time to do some weave. It's a little bit windy outside today, so. And we're back. Flash forward a couple days where it's not so windy out there. You can actually hear me. We got our new wand here. Linseed oil's dried on it. And we're ready to go give this thing a try. So let's go out the garden and do the weave. So we've already got our stakes in place, as you can see here. Let me talk about this for a minute, about what kind of stakes to use. So the last few years, I've used these right here, which are these uh, four foot long wooden stakes. That's what all the commercial guys use. And they work pretty good, except up to last year. And I don't know if it's because I got better at growing tomatoes or some of the varieties we grew just got made uh, bigger plants. But I had a lot of those stakes break on me once those plants got big and heavy. Those wooden stakes seem to work fine for peppers and I'll probably still use them on peppers this year but I had some issues last year with my determinate tomatoes the stakes got a little wet at the bottom there and kind of rotted and once one stake goes this whole thing can kind of topple over so this year I decided to go with something a little more sturdy so I got five foot t-post here and they don't look like five foot t-post anymore because I drove them in the ground pretty good the goal was to get just about four foot or so sticking out of the ground and that's what we did so we drove them in there good and when i was using the wooden stakes i would put a stake between every two plants okay and sometimes i would put a metal post on the end just to give it a little more support however since i'm using these sturdier metal t-posts here i'm going to try to get away with going 
one post every four plants as you see here and i think it's going to work just fine as long as we make sure we get our twine tight so i've got these posts every four plants along this row and then on the end obviously and um, we're going to give that a try this year on these determinate tomatoes as opposed to the wooden stakes okay this is always a little tricky to film because once i get this going i can't really go back and grab the camera because i'm kind of tied to everything myself but i got my box of twine right here i've got my new wand so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run my string here up through my wand as i showed you earlier in the video and then through this loop right here and we're going to start out by just tying it around this t-post here probably i don't know six or eight inches above the bottom i want to come along here and have my string hit these plants about right there so let's tie it off all right got that nice and secure now on this first line of string we run i want to get the string right up against the main stem there as these things grow and we add more lines of weave we'll uh not really try to worry about that we'll just kind of bunch all the foliage together but for this first one i like to get it nice and secure against that main stem right there so let's take our new stick here and the way we do this we just weave so we go around this plant around the other side of the other plant and as we come to each post we wrap around the post so i'm going to go on this side of this plant this side of this guy this side of this guy right here and then we'll just wrap it around the post and keep going and then as we're coming back we're just going to go on the other side of the plants that we went the first time and we'll get down here to this back to the beginning we'll wrap around this guy here then we'll cut our string and tie it off and there we go it's that simple now you couldn't tell because i walked out of the frame but i went all the way down to the end of the road before i came back and finished this section here that you saw me finish so the way the weave works there is we just have twine running on both sides of the plant there to support it and as these things grow we just add more lines of twine usually i'll end up adding probably four lines of twine total so we'll have you know two more there and then one at the very top and these determinate tomatoes usually only get four foot tall or so so that is usually plenty of support for these guys now with the weave like i said it's pretty simple you just got to make sure you keep your line nice and tight that's where it's handy having a little tool like we use or a piece of pipe whatever you want to use keep your line nice and tight tie it tight around each post as you go i usually like to wrap it two or three times in both directions uh, as i'm coming to the pipe and then coming back to it coming back down the row so keep your line tight i would highly recommend using a poly string like we use here not a cotton string the cotton will stretch this stuff here doesn't really stretch doesn't really break and uh, if you got good sturdy stakes everything should hold up and just a great way to trellis your determinate tomatoes this is the way the big boys do it and this is the way I've been doing it for quite a few years. And with the exception of my stakes breaking last year, it has always worked very well for me. Now, as far as my new wand goes, I like it a lot better than using that piece of PVC. Still gonna take a little getting used to because you have to kind of hold it at the right angle or otherwise the string would wanna wrap around the base of this loop here. So I gotta, I gotta kind of get the hang of this thing. It'll take me a few, sessions of doing some weave which we'll have plenty to do here with these peppers and tomatoes and stuff but after a few runs with it i should get the hang of it i do like it a lot better than that piece of pipe i was using as far as the height of your stakes go you can't see that stake right there can you um you can put them however low or however tall you want them my goal was to have them 
low enough so when I'm weaving around them, they don't catch on my shirt. I've had that happen before and rip quite a few shirts right there in the armpit area. So your height may, or your height may come into play here. You can drive your stakes in the ground as far as you need to so you're not catching your shirt or something on it as you're weaving around it. I would say even three, three and a half foot out of the ground will still be fine for determinate tomatoes, but you could certainly go taller with the stake if you want to. The taller the stake, the harder it is to get your arm around and weave. So for me, about four foot out of the ground works pretty good. So I hope everybody enjoyed that little Florida weave tutorial there. Once you get it all set up, get your posts in place, it really doesn't take long at all to do. And sorry I couldn't get more footage of it, but once I'm tied to the system there, I can't grow grab the camera and move it. And this is just a one man shoot today. So hopefully there was enough footage there to show you kind of how we do it. And if you're a veteran Florida weaver out there, let me know if you do it a different way. There are some slight variations to the technique. And if you never tried the Florida weave before and you got some questions about it, definitely put those in the comments below and I'll be glad to try to answer them for you. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Oh, well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.